If you're new around here, my name's Art, and I make all my videos with Kane Live damn near and under Linux. I'm a full-time Linux enthusiast. I live and breathe it. This is how I make my videos. We're gonna jump right into this, but I first wanna preface this video with saying that this is for beginners, but by beginners, I mean, you gotta at least know how video editing kind of works. So if you've ever dabbled with iMovie or um, Windows Movie Maker, I'm kind of dating myself there, or any other really basic video editing platform, this should be like second nature for you. It's it's actually pretty straightforward and pretty easy to get into. But just keep in mind, if you don't know what you're doing at all, I definitely recommend checking out some introductions to video editing, um, the real 101 stuff. But I, again, I think the most of you will jump right into this. Now I'm gonna go over the basics of DUI, um, how to work your way around the timeline editor and a few other things, but hold on till the end because I'm going to show you a little tip that will drastically, well, potentially drastically improve your render times. And it's something that I use all the time and I'm so glad I have it. It's like not an obvious feature of Kane Live, but it definitely, definitely helps the process. So the first thing you want to do is you want to make sure you have a copy of Kane Live installed on your machine. Um, because I'm a Linux user and this is kind of a Linux centric channel, I'm going to go into how to do that. You can always grab it from your repository of your operating system, but depending on the operating system you're running, which version of Linux you're running or whatever, you may not have access to the newest version out of your repository. So let's go into the download section. The newest version is 20.08.3 as of this recording. If you're running Windows, you have a standalone application, you have a full installer, and they show here the app image and the PPA. The PPA is gonna be um, Ubuntu-centric. So I believe almost all Ubuntu derivatives will handle that, but not like Arch or you know Fedora-based. The app image should be relatively universal. This is gonna be a single binary where the entire program uh, goes. If you're still new to using Linux, this might be your best option. One of the reasons why you might also choose app images is because you can actually have different versions of the same program installed on your machine because they're just files that you launch. So you can have an older version. And I've had it in the past where the newer version has some kind of glaring bug and you wanna go back one step. The app image is probably the easiest way to do that. Having said that, I haven't had that issue in a very long time. I'm a big fan of the flat pack version. So whoever maintains this flat pack version, it's almost up to date within a few days of a new build coming. So you always have the fresh build as long as you got this repository added. And that's how I run it. So let's drop into the program itself. The program itself, this is this is kind of new in version 20, but we have workspaces. Uh, DaVinci Resolve and a few other large uh, frameworks do the workspaces, and I find it works really good for me. But let's kind of dive into what these different workspaces do. So logging. Logging is kind of simple. I, I don't use it very often, but this is basically you organize your clips, you look at your clip properties, and you can make notes. Now, you're probably thinking, why would you make notes? Well, the idea is that maybe you work on a project, you put it away for a while, and then you come back and you got to remember or maybe you're collaborating with another Caden Live video editor, you can add notes here for yourself or others of, you know, where you have left off on a project or what you want to do with a clip. You know, it's, it, it maintains these notes within the Caden Live project file. The editing uh, page. Now this is a very traditional editing layout. You have your timelines down here. The player starts from here and works its way that way. The center video, this is always going to be the clip preview. So when you clip, we you have your, you know, your project menu, you click on a clip here, you can preview it here. Um, this window will be the playback of the live timeline. And you got a few audio channels over here. But if you really need to get into audio deeper, there's a whole section for that. All your audio channels will run across this way. You're gonna have a spectrum analysis, of course your timeline, and all your audio effects that you can add. So some of these sections, like the audio, the effects, and the color, they're kind of still building these out. Um, they're very functional, but they might be missing some of the more detailed tools if you're coming from like DaVinci Resolve. 
So effects, this is going to be like compositing and layering of images. Again, it the plugins and tools are very limited right now. They're very rudimentary, but more is coming. And color. This page gives you, you know, your RGB, your color wheel, access to your timeline, and a bunch of plugins and color effects. Uh, I do my color correction usually on this tab. You can build more layouts. They call them layouts. I often call them workspaces. Um, but these are the ones that are baked in by default when you install uh, version 20. So let's go in to the video editor. So depending on your workflow, um, the project bin has the ability to group things in these folders. Now, when I have a larger project, it makes it a lot easier because I can figure out where everything is and put them in there and then have a nice clean interface. There's also a um, icon view system. I feel like this doesn't work nearly as good with the folders. So usually I have in the tree view that works a lot better. If I'm doing a simpler project where I just have clips, I might go icon view because it makes it easier to just quick glance and figure out where your stuff is. So this is actually um, a video that I was working on earlier today. It's a very simple video, but I figured this is a good example of all how the pieces work. And I'm going to dive into each little piece here. So these are video clips I have. You can see the preview in the middle window. And if you see this P here, that means I have proxied these video files. Now I'm editing on a laptop. It's an i7, it's about four year old laptop. I can play back these videos in full resolution just fine. But when you're doing color correction and compositing and stuff like that, it can start stuttering. So not only do I have the render here down to 270 on both those, but I also have a proxy file. And that lets me have a very smooth editing experience. It's very smooth. Um, and when I play back in the beginning, I can see in real time the motion, even though it's a very low resolution. Um, so let's look at the timeline here. You have this triangle here. This is from me pulling the corners in. On video, this will fade to black. And on audio, as you can see, it'll fade the audio uh, quieter. So when you, you can you know have it right here and then it fades in. If you hover over each additional clip, you can see it's red on this side, it's green on this side. This is where you're able to drag. Now it's not moving the clip, it's just changing where this video starts. If I drag this up to this timeline here, you can see this video starts before that point, which I think this is a good point to point out um, how to do transition. So let's say I drag this one over that one, and I hover over here, you have this purple click to add a composition. Now it's going to be fade. It's not a very good spot to do a fade example, but you get the idea. And you of course can modify the type of, of wipe you have. Normally when you're doing video, much like the one I'm shooting here, you'd have an audio track and a video track track. Unfortunately, I chose to use drone footage that doesn't have audio tracks. So normally you'd have the video, in the uh, video one track, the audio and audio one track, and then you'd have to push your music down to lower tracks. You, of course, could add more tracks after that or more video tracks before that, but um, that's just something I wanted to point out. So when it comes to adding footage to your, um, your project bin, there's several ways you can do it. You can open up a file browser and grab a, a video and drop it in or you can add a clip and find your way over to where you want to grab it. So let's go over 612, 612. There we go. We've added 612. Awesome. This is the raw video out of thing. As you can see, it's, there's a little delay as I play back on this. Um, so what we got to do is we're going to go ahead and proxy that. And it takes a few seconds to do the proxy. It's, it's pretty fast on my machine. It usually doesn't take too much. I believe it's making like an MJPEG or a, a low bit rate MPEG-4. There we go. And now, there we go. Nice and smooth. So we want to add this to the clip. We can just drag it down here and drop it in this way. But there's also, when you have it here in the timeline, you can drag here 
and choose where you want the clip to begin by clicking there. And you see the blue area changes into there. Now this is this will just be that few seconds. You drag that down and then boom. We can add that, drag it a little bit longer, and we can do a fade here. And next thing you know. That's nice. So let's say we want to add a title. Now Caden Live does have a kind of bare bones title uh, editor, and it's getting better all the time. Um, and, it'll, and it's going to work out pretty good. What I like to do is you want to make sure that you are over the section where you want your title to be. And you add a, a, a title clip. What this is going to do by default, it's going to show a low resolution version of your background right here. So you have an idea what your title is going to look like. And you have your you know shape drawing, you add rectangles. You can add external images. But most of the time, we're just going to add text. So... Let's call this one um, Caden Live. Oop. Caden Live. <laughs> Live video demo. Now it's not a great font. So let's, let's pick something. Let's pick something a little more fierce here. Um, make a, the light font. Let's make this 128. Oh, yeah, that's much better. And we can hit right here, we can center it that way, center it that way. And there's actually a pretty good shadow tool. If you want, you can kind of zoom in. It's, again, the, the resolution is not great, but it kind of gives you an idea what you're working with. So let's do our offset zero. I like that. Make that five. I like kind of the fluffier shadow. And then let's, um, let's change that alpha to 192, a little bit darker, heavier shadow. There we go. Mm, yeah, I'm going to make that blur a bit deeper, too. Let's do a 10-pixel blur. Oh, I like that. Let's see. Fit. Is that fit? That's original size, and that is fit. All right. I'm going to move it down here. It's a little bit darker down here, so you can uh, center it. But you can also add a layer. Let's say I want to add, let's add a black layer. And I can change the size of the layer, so it would be width uh, 1920, because that's the width of our video. And then I can move it to the bottom and put it on the bottom there and center it. And that looks good, but I think I want to change to a gradient color. Let's see if we can change the gradient, color one, color two. Color two will also be black, but it will be transparent. Okay, oh, look at that. So now we have a bit of a color separation there. Why is it not down there? <laughs> that is weird. Okay. And I'll put it on the bottom layer. There we go. That's much better. So we created that title. And now we have the title. We can just drag it over. And by default, you'll see the video. But you can also make it fade in and fade out. So it's a little less abrupt. Very nice. Now, there's nothing stopping you from making titles in a different program like um, uh, Blender or the GIMP and just laying the PNG or video. It will support alpha channel videos. So if you want to make an animated graphic in Blender and load it in here, you can do that. So let's look at the rendering. Rendering. I just did a test render earlier. So by default, um, you have your MP4 dominating format. This is not a bad way to go. But you are able to actually download other um, render profiles. And this is the secret one. This is the one that I think a lot of people can get really excited about. If your hardware supports it, VAAPI, that's Intel QuickSync. Now, I'm lucky enough to have hardware that does support this. It depends on your, your, um, your computer and if your operating system implemented it properly. I'm running Debian and they did a great job. So um, I'm gonna render this to Peer 2. I already rendered a Peer 1 earlier. And we're gonna render to file. All right, yes. And the Quick Sync should do a much faster job of encoding. However, there is a little bit of a trade-off. The FFmpeg will give you a higher quality file at a lower bit rate. But as long as the bit rate of this render is of a certain uh, quality, I mean uh, size, it should look fine. I do all my video uploads this way. I just 
crank the bitrate all the way up and I don't mind having a larger file to upload. Render is done and now we have full resolution video ready to go. Doing a screen capture of it was not the smartest way of doing it, but you know, it works and it looks good. We got the full color. We have the the, uh, the color adjustments we did, the edits exactly like we like them. Even though we were editing with the proxy files, it renders with the raw files. Speaking of proxies, it needs to be said that it doesn't really matter what the format is that you bring into your editor. When you proxy the clip, it becomes easy to edit and scrub through. It, however, will extend your render times about, for example, from 2K to 4K, that's about four times as much video footage. So it's gonna take about four times as long to render. So as an example of the proxy power, I have this ProRes video that I got from the Blackmagic Design uh, sample clip page, because I don't have a ProRes capable camera. Uh, that's okay. I grabbed a few of the clips and I dropped them into Kane Live and proxied them. And even though my computer has trouble playing the files, here they are uh, with some basic color corrections. And you can see the scrubbing is smooth as butter. The playback is just fine. And the render times, well, the render times, they are what they are. But there's nothing stopping you from doing this with 4K, 8K, 16K, as long as you're willing to put up with the massively exaggerated render times. You're still here. You you made it to the end of the video. No one ever makes it to the end of the video. That's amazing. Hi, I guess we're kind of like this secret club of those who make it to the end of videos. So I'm trying to get my subscriber count up. I'm just on the precipice of 3K followers. So if you like what's going on here, you want to see more of this, subscribe. It helps me out quite a bit. I wouldn't ask if I didn't think I didn't think it'd be good. It's good stuff. I plan on doing good stuff here. I hope you uh, hope you enjoy uh, the stuff I'm doing. Anyways, guys, I will catch you guys on the next one, and see you later.